Okay, all good. Good evening, welcome to the January 2021 Parish Council meeting of Chilthorne Doma, being live streamed by the YouTube channel. Kevin, across to you as chairman, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emma. So we'll start off with item one, apologies and absence. Uh, Should we start the open session again. first? Should we open the session first, Mr Chairman? Oh, right. yeah, it's not Bernard Donner then. Okay, we'll open it with an open session in first. There, there is nothing for the open session, but we do need to record that there is nothing. Okay. <laughs> Trying to catch me out, weren't you? <laughs> now we can go to apologies, please. Okay. Okay, apologies and absence. Uh, Mark sends his apologies again, obviously for obvious reasons. And as I've just mentioned, Tim is hoping to join us, but we'll be late. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, we move on to then declarations of interest. Has anyone got any? No. Nope. Item three, minutes of the previous meeting. Happy to approve. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Item four then. County Councillor's Report. Okay. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. Um, just to really start off, I think, with the small improvement scheme, you would have seen that um, work began on the 4th of January. Um, and it's expected to last until the end of the month. I think it's Friday, the 29th of January. Um, at the moment, there are three-way three -way traffic lights in place. And as work progresses, I think we can assume that that sort of temporary infrastructure will fall away. Um, and I know, obviously, this means there is some disruption um for motorists and, and residents but obviously it's necessary to be able to implement the scheme so um all i can really sort of say is if there is anything that crops up um between now and when it's completed um i'll let you know um but i haven't heard that there are any problems and for the last week it seems to be going along quite well um in terms of COVID-19, um, changing situation. So everything I'm about to say is probably out of date um, by now, but obviously we're now in the midst of a national lockdown. Um, the message is simple, you must stay at home and there is more advice on what you can and can't do on the .gov website. I'm not gonna go through each individual point. Um, in terms of the numbers, again, I'm probably way out of date right now because this is the last last update I had was on the 31st of December. Um, COVID cases in Somerset is uh, is 9,355, and this is up from 5,110 from the 1st of December. So that's quite a significant increase, actually. Um, and the uh, unfortunately, the number of COVID attributed deaths is 335. Um, and that's up from 228 at the beginning of uh, December. In terms of the infection rate, we're looking at uh, 248 um, per 100,000 in the whole of Somerset, uh, with South Somerset actually being the lowest at 193. Um, the areas um, in uh, Taunton and Bridgewater seems to be actually bringing the overall average um, up. Um, and what this means is that the number of um, the number of deaths across the county are currently three percent above the five year average and the latest R value they're estimating between one and one point two. In terms of the vaccine, obviously that started to roll out and we and Yeovil Hospital had the first vaccinations on the 9th of December um, and Yeovil Hospital will continue to be a place um, for uh, for people to get their vaccinations. Um, one of the main, I think, uh, things to point out is that the NHS is asking that people don't contact uh, their GP surgery or hospitals for vaccines, they will contact you if, if you're into one of the high priority groups in the, in the first instance. But more information on this can be found on the um, CCG website. So that's all from me. Um, is there any questions at all? Um, I don't have any at the moment, Josh. No. Not yet, do I? Okay. Just, uh... Just, uh... 
sorry, I just wanted to, I'm assuming that um, uh, I think the, the latest update was that primary schools are not opening up until February. Is that right? Just the only reason I say that is because at the moment, that congestion at the top end of Main Street is quite significant and we've been very lucky in timing this that actually the school's not open um if the school was to open before that date and the works were still to be in place with the current traffic scheme i think all hell might break loose at the top end of main street yeah no and I, actually I, i'm glad you said that because i didn't know whether i was being um particularly uh <laughs> well, i don't know whether it was insensitive by, by mentioning that uh, you know the fact that actually it is quite lucky that it's not it's not open but um I think at the moment, as far as the, the school openings are concerned, I, can't, I, I don't know for individual schools, but, but as far as I'm aware, at the moment, they are open for um, children of uh, um, uh, key workers. Um, I don't know what, how that impacts um, ch children at the school itself, but, but actually, uh, you know, in terms of them opening up, following i don't know the first few weeks I, i'm not entirely sure i think that the, the education authority is taking this step by step taking um advice from government um and obviously at the moment it is they're, they're purely open for uh, key worker children yeah that's fine i i think there's just as long as the school are aware on the time scales of the work so that they can communicate with parents i think really um so um but you yeah, know it's it's great to see that work doing and obviously the small improvement scheme is going to benefit the school pupils anyway Absolutely. Okay. So we move on to item six then. Highway matter. Uh, no, item five tonight now. No. Item five. District. You can bring it forward if you like. Yeah. No district councillors report, please. You carry on, Tony. Okay. Well, there's not really a lot the report. Just to tell you, all area committee meetings have been cancelled. Um, we're supposed to have an area east next Wednesday and a free agenda on Monday. So that's all the four areas cancelled due to this uh, vaccination that's going on. And a lot of our officers have been put in to actually take part in helping with the vaccination. And therefore, staff is going to be very quite scarce. So that's why we haven't got any committee meetings. And it'll probably be until the end of February. Um, on top of that, I don't think I've got anything else to report because we haven't had a meeting yet. And that's Paul got something to add on that. Um, the only thing I've had is somebody complain about not having um, something in place of the school meal. They normally have a voucher. They've now got to have the embarrassing point of picking up food, parcels. And they get it home and half of it's rotten. So they've got the embarrassment and then what they're given isn't edible. But apart from that, I think the rest is, as you say, we're in lockdown, we can't do a lot. Just to add on there, Jared, as well, we've been looking last year to try and get some company or something to look at these nitrates and phosphates to do with planning and um, the runoff of the fields and everything. As far as I know, and I've been told this, that our district council have um, employed or got some agency or company to actually look into this. So I hope that uh, we'll resolve the matter as soon as possible, Chairman. So it's ongoing. Thank you very much, Tony. Did you have something you want to say, Josh? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm on Paul's point. Um, I, I just say there are a number of, um, of schemes um, that can actually help the community in, in, in these particular circumstances. So if you wanted to sort of um, send me some details, I'm more than happy to go and see whether the, the County Council um, has, has any type of support that could help, you know, the constituent. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, and, and let you know and, and send you any, any details of that. I'll pass that on, Josh. Thank you very much. No problem. And is there any questions anybody would like to ask Paul and myself? Um, not really. I don't think Tony. I've got one on highway matters in a minute, but I don't think um, I don't think you need to be here if you don't want to be. Oh, I'm going to stay on a little bit longer, Chairman, because I, I do enjoy these uh, meetings, and uh, I'll let you know when <laughs> it's time for me to go. Thanks, Chairman. Thanks, Tony. Okay, we move on to item six then, highway matters. 
Okay, I'm, I'll kick this one off at the moment. Um, we have a report of a gentleman putting a cone nearly halfway into the road outside of Rectory Cottage. Now, I have first-hand experience of this because I nearly had a car hit me the other night trying to swerve around it. Um, I don't know what can be done about it. Um, do we send him a letter? Do we get highways to look into this? Um, but you can't have just Joe Public putting what they want in the middle of a road. Do you know who it is and when they tend to do it and why they're doing it? Or Right, yes, we know who it is. It's the gentleman in Rectory Cottage, not Rose Cottage, as um, in the email earlier. It's Rectory Cottage. And there's a massive puddle. When it rains, there's a massive puddle forms right outside of his house. And every time a car drives through there, it splashes it all over his house. I can understand why he does it, but he can't put people's lives and safety in, the, in his hands and, you know, do what he wants on the road. It's not his public highway. So, so it is part of the uh, part of the adopted highway, that, that road? Yes. Right. Yeah. It's, okay. wrong, it's on the Tintnall Chilfron Road, the Oval Road here, um, just between um, Mark's place and the school, obviously, but on the other side of the road. Oh, it's I know what you're talking about. The chickens. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I know. Um, can you can you send me a quick uh, note, and I'll I'll get onto highways and see whether they can go either go and have a word or um, you know do a, a soft approach in the first instance. Is that okay? Oh, dear, Josh. okay. Cool. Thank you. And and if you, if you can, if you can give me a um, I, I know I know where it is, but if you could just um, I'll do a plan as well. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so that's that one. I don't know if anyone else has got anything on highway matters. I have. Obviously, I'm oh. keeping count still on the accidents down here. Um, I was hoping the improvements would have helped. But since we've had the improvements, we've had two more accidents. One involved in a motorbike and one a car being hit up the back end, turning right. And until the speed limit is reduced, I think this is just going to carry on. But apart from that, all the nice new signs are looking pretty and they haven't been smashed in yet by cars or trucks. But otherwise, um, nobody's died, which is good. Okay. Anything else on highways at all? No. Nope. Okay, we'll move on to community safety and police matters then. Anyone on anything on that? Regarding the police matters, again, the, the website is um, out of date with regards to statistics. Okay. I've got one. I don't know if it would come under community safety or not. I think Mark mentioned about this footbridge up at Manor Farm. I think it's in the Brimpton Um, area it's falling over basically and it's dangerous for people to cross they keep sliding off the side of it now where the bank has collapsed I think um, Emma you um, spoke to Mark about it last month did you yeah Mark's having more phone calls and that about it and it's not very good up there so perhaps you could pass on to Brimpton or something or I had a f please correct me if I'm wrong but I had a feeling that Mark had spoken to Eve Wynn about it I, well I'm not or sure he was certainly that, trying to get hold of her he, nothing seemed to have happened and he's getting more complaints about it. If it's in the Brinton area, then the best bet is just to pass it on to the clerk and, um, you know, see whether they they can take it up. Mm, it's only a matter of time before somebody gets hurt up there, I believe. From I, I don't know it myself because I haven't walked up through there, but um, it seems... I'll give Mark a call and... Quite, and try and locate it on a map so that I can pass it on to Brimpton. Yeah, okay. Just a, 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 a quick question as well. Um, so obviously um, opposite Vag Lane, I'm, I'm a, sorry, I, I, my, my lane names are, are, are really, really bad, my knowledge of them. Um, I'm sorry, I've lived here for years. <laughs> um, the lane that leads up towards Thorn, um, is that still Vag Lane there or was that um, 
basically when you're passing uh lara honor's house there's a public footpath that goes off through the fields um the, the style there is starting to become very very loose now um it's obviously used on a daily basis by now an increased amount of walkers um and i'm just waiting for that thing to then to, to collapse over while someone crosses over it um who who looks after maintaining those out of curiosity that uh, again will be a report to Eve. Uh, you can do it on the website, on the County Council website, uh, if you're aware of where it is, Adam. Either that or we'll talk outside of the meeting and I'll again try and track it down on a map and report it. Yeah, that's right. It's just a bit of preventative, really. Um, I know that route is used a lot by by a lot of the village folk, um, you know, doing dog walks or whatever, because it's it's quite a good good route to do. But uh, I just thought I'd just mention it anyways. But obviously, it'd be good to try and get it repaired before someone does have an accident there. I mean, ultimately, with any of the... Go on, Josh. So, sorry, I was just going to say, with any of these sort of public rights of way, I mean, if you aren't getting anywhere with, with the county council, then by all means, you know, just send me a note and I can see whether I can get it pushed through to someone actually to go and you know assess it and uh and hopefully get something done um but uh but i i, I prefer to have something in writing so at least then i can um i can then follow it up sure that's perfect and that is is that is vag lane right oh uh, i i don't know <laughs> it's really thorn lane one thorn lane is it up to go towards thorn coffin yeah that's right <laughs> I would, I would imagine this footpath is at the end of that, this bridge is at the end of that footpath where we're talking about. That's exactly what I was going to say, is it wouldn't surprise me if the style was the other yeah. end of oh, the bridge. Oh, yes. No, yes. Is, is, so that's up, is it along the foot, the public footpath that way, where the bridge is basically leaning right that's over? The one. That's Got it. the one. Yeah, very so it's the same it's the same route. Yeah, it is very dangerous. It gets and it gets very slippery and wet. I think it's probably around about twenty to twenty five degree lean on it at the moment. So uh it's uh sporting. Okay, so it sounds as though someone needs to actually just go up there and assess the assess the public highway down there and you know, pick up any um I think potential the hazards collapsed, Josh, basically, where it's oh, okay. been put in many years ago. I'd imagine there's no footing underneath it and it's gradually twisted and twisted over the years in the soil. Okay. And now it's getting to the point where it's very dangerous. Hmm. Okay. Um, Emma, we're, you, talking, can... we're talking about footpath Y33 and Y34. Okay. Thank can you, you say... Hamish. Could you send me a um a note, Emma, on both of those and I'll I'll see if I can get get someone to sort it. I am not. fairly certain that I have reported the bridge in the past. Yeah, okay. I think you did. I'm fairly certain I did. Um I can trawl back through, but that seems almost pointless. Let's just report it again and, and I'll yep. send Josh a note at the same time. We so can that do he what... can follow up the report. We can do what three words as well, Josh, if you were, if you're uh, your council's modern enough to, to use that for navigation. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that we can. I'll send it on, Josh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we all okay to move on to automate. You uh, up with us, Emma? Yeah. Okay. Automate and financial matters and accounts. Nothing much to report, um, other than small amount of interest. There's been no receipts. Um, moving on to B, obviously we've got the usual of my salary and HMRC. Um, I did take the executive decision to buy some postage stamps before the price rocketed. Um, we don't get through that many. We do send one letter each month for HMRC um, to send the cheque to them. Uh, but we don't get yeah. through very many stamps. But I did think to myself, let's buy some stamps because it was it's quite an increase in price. So yeah. I thought I'd um, yeah. save you some money by doing so. So good if you could agree good. the £18.24 as well, that'd be lovely, please. That's a, that's agreed. It was, it was only a big increase in first-class stamps. If you use second-class stamps, it went up a penny. I know that's <laughs> getting up for 2%, but not too bad. Indeed, I do try and, and have a mix. It depends on, on how swiftly a letter needs to get to wherever it's going. Um, but I do have a mix of, of first class and second class that are, that are labelled Chilthon Doma uh, in my possession. Um, but obviously, as I say, it was just the let's buy some. They don't have a price written on them. 
they just say first. So, uh, and as far as grant requests are concerned, we've not had any per se, other than the obviously the climate change community fund bits that we're going to get to later on the agenda. Okay. So the other thing is, seeing they've now started the small improvement scheme, I suppose they'll be after some money for the bus shower now, will they? One would assume so, but I've not yet received an invoice. I've received okay. confirmation of the licence, not actually received the signed copy thereof, but I have received confirmation of it. Um, but I've not received an invoice yet for the bus shelter. Okay. No problem. Thank you for that. I won't chase that no. one up. No, it's okay. So item nine, planning matters. Nothing received. Nothing. Okay, we'll move swiftly on to item 10 then. Climate change emergency community fund. I'd kind of hope that Tim would get here by this point. Do you, want to, do you want to leave off that one for a minute and we'll just move on, skip on and pass and come back to Should that Should we later? give time, give Tim a chance to potentially get, he might not make it at all, but let's give, I think that it would be best to give yeah. him, as he's we'll, kind of been we'll kind of leading back. on it. Yeah, we'll come back to that one, then we'll come back to item 10. We'll move on to item 11 then. Thank in you very of, much. In lieu of Tim, sorry, if, if Tim doesn't make it by the end of the meeting, I'm happy to give a, a high level overview of that because I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of I'm aware of the applications that are going on, so I could potentially give a summary okay. of what's going on with that. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Um, that's important correspondence. Um, item A. Some of you will remember the issue that we had, um, or not necessarily the issue, request that we had from the Hive for drainage through the Recreation Trust area um, to join up with the mains drainage. We have had a similar request from Avalon Garage from Mr. Mike Hodder uh, and a follow-up query from somebody that's potentially buying the property. Um, those of you that don't know, or those of you that wish to be reminded, as custodian trustees, of the Recreation Trust, you would be involved in signing any legal document to agree to it, but you do have to go along with whatever the Recreation Trust committee decides. The agreement would be between the landowner, be that current or future, and South Somerset District Council as the owners of the land that the recreation area is on. I believe, and I might be wrong, but I do believe that should Wessex Water want to get heavy as statutory undertakers, they could enforce that it happens. Um, so, unfortunately, the Recreation Club has pointed Mr Hodder in our direction, saying that it's our decision. Um, I have had a conversation with him and given him a brief overview of where we got to with the hive. Um, but obviously I don't want, didn't want to say anything further until it was brought to this meeting for, for you as a council to discuss um, and to point me in the direction of what you would like me to do and like me to say. I don't think, I don't think the Recreation Trust Committee would agree to it. To be honest. Okay, Hamish. I've had um, somebody's also spoke to me about it. They're not keen on the idea, especially after the other fiasco that happened that um, the hive wanted, and then nothing happened out of it. And also, a thousand pound donation. You know, it, it would cost thousands to go down the road to do it. You know what I mean? And there's no, nothing put in there about who's liable for what, who's going to pay for what. Um, it's, you know, I mean, a phase and pain donation is really a token effort. I understood that the pipe from the recreation club to the main road belongs to the club or the trust, yeah. recreation trust. So I don't see how the water 
Wessex Water could plumb into that, they could put another pipe in. But I don't see why they could be able to plumb into the private pipe. I don't. I don't think they would be able to plumb into the private pipe. But I, I am of the belief that Wessex Water could dig through the Recreation Trust ground to put a pipe in. Yeah. They would obviously have to make it good afterwards. Yeah, I agree. That, power. That's what seems to come up the last time, that they could force it if they wanted to, but they couldn't just plumb, plumb in to the Rex pipe. I do know that they the, the, <clears throat> the trust have had trouble with the drains in the past. Um, because I had to call in um, a chap to uh, unblock the drains once, and um, it was uh, it took him quite a quite a long time to do it um, because it was all being used by the footballers and that, and there was all all sorts of things being put down uh, the toilets. But um, obviously now um, that's probably okay. But they have had trouble with uh, the drains in the past, and it's only a four inch main anyway. What I would suggest, although I, I can't actually propose anything, but what I would suggest is if you're happy um, that I go back to both Mr Hodder and to the other inquirer um, and ensure that they are aware that of the process, if you like, that they would need to have an arrangement with South Somerset who would come to the Recreation Trust for a yes or a no, and that as, trust, as custodian trustees, the parish council would have to sign the document if it got that far, but we would also have to agree with what the Recreation Trust said. Uh, is, it, is it possible to get a... Sorry, I've got a bad echo there. Um, is it possible to kind of, um, I guess, maybe probably offline, uh, really, to get an understanding of the impact, but either way, uh, I guess, you know, the moment, obviously connecting up uh, the, the, the join their waste onto the existing pipe or... Do, kind of, I guess, sharing that waste pipe, obviously, you know, there will be an impact, but it'd be, I guess, useful to understand really what the, the, the contention points are both sides, just so at least it's it's clear for people who are not plumbers and don't understand such uh, such things. Yeah, I, I can immediately tell you one side, if you like, is that the property currently has no main sewerage and has no septic tank of their own. Uh, right. Actually, and no, do have and no ground tank. to put it in. No, they, they do have a septic tank. They share one with the existing building that used to be attached to the garage. It's now been split into two properties and they both share one septic tank. Yeah. Right. So this is and to avoid putting a second is, septic tank in. It ha yeah, half the problem is, I believe, is the soak away side of it has probably failed. And they're, you know, they're looking for a, an easier route out of it than coming to a proper agreement between the two. Yeah. When it comes to a septic tank, the new regs, they don't have enough land to put a new septic tank in anyway. That's the issue is that they can't put their own septic tank in. No, but I still think the easiest way to get around this is to put a four inch soil pipe down the actual boundary of the school playing field and the fence. There's no drive to dig up, it'd be a brand new pipe it wouldn't take two days to put a pipe in down there and reinstate it. The trouble is, if you let one join, then the other one will want to join, and then the oh, other no, one will want to join. It'd be conditional that both join on that one pipe. What the, what the trust are worried about is, as Dennis said, if had trouble in the past yeah. with stuff blocking the pipe, then they would then have no control over half the stuff that was coming yeah. into the pipe. No, I agree yeah. with that. But if you put a new pipe in along the boundary of the school, you're not even going on trust ground. Agreed. It's only got, it's only got shrubs there at the moment. It just needs the people without septic tanks to come up with the money, doesn't it? Well, yes, they've got to pay for it. Yeah. But it's the shortest route and it'd be clean. It won't affect anybody else's sewerage. So back to your point, Kevin, about the uh, the thousand pound token gesture. Actually, is it's probably that's probably significantly less than what it would cost them to actually get the uh, the new main in. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Sorry, I understand now. That's fine. By a factor of at least ten, I should think. I yeah, I would believe so. 
you know, they, they all bought the properties knowing what they had there. So what would you like me to go back to the inquirers with? It's got a big I'm problem. Yeah. <laughs> They're aware of that, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Put this way, if those houses go on the mains, the value will go up far more than it's going to cost to put them on the mains. They're not going to lose any money. It all needs to tight. Just do it. That's not that's not an answer to the question that we've been asked, though. Well, the question... they are probably they are probably more more than aware of that, but that's not an answer to the question that we've been asked. I'd propose that we go back, remind them of the process and the fact that we will we will side with the the decision of the the committee for the uh, for the recreational ground. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> and there's pretty much no doubt what that decision would be. Is everybody happy with that proposal? Yep. Yes, I'm happy. Yeah. We go back and remind them of the process. Yeah. Good evening, Tim. Good evening. I missed all of that. Apologies. Yeah, family fun. Chairman, can I say good night to everybody now? It's been very interesting. Again, I hope to catch you next. Thanks, Tony. Cheers, Tony. Thanks, Good night, Tony. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Tony. Good night. Good evening, Tim. took the fact that nobody said no you weren't happy with that proposal that you were all happy with that proposal yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it Thanks. might be an idea just to include the fact that it is a private pipe from the wreck to the road and they wouldn't be able to plug into it okay Samish. okay and we go um, item the, the other item for correspondence um, you've already raised under highways matters. Yeah. So, thank you. Okay, brilliant. Would you like to go back to item nine now? Uh, no, let's go back no, to no, item no. 10. Ten. 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 I'm all over the place tonight. <laughs> we can do item nine, but it would be quite a short item. <laughs> yeah. yeah, item 10, and now Tim's joined us. Right. Part of my paperwork. Whilst, whilst Tim does that, basically it counts as what we're going to need from you at this point is an agreement that the application should be submitted to Somerset County Council or not um, and obviously that may involve some discussion per application that we've received. I have um, subsequent to the um, publishment of the agenda received an email, sorry I forgot the word agenda then it's quite important to my world, uh, received an email um, unfortunately from Juliet she's not been able to complete the fourth application for the community engagement scheme at this point due to other commitments and other issues. Tim, did that buy you enough time? Yes, it did, thank you. Right, okay, well, if I kick off, if I can kick off with the first one, which is the, the Village Hall um, application, um, I'll cover the sort of the background for what the changes have been since the last meeting. Um, there were several points raised last time we met. Um, Kevin had also had asked whether or not all other work had been done on both the village hall and the rec um, that would improve the um, or reduce the the energy costs. Um, I can confirm that I've gone through the village hall plans from the refurbishment um, and confirm that there is insulation in pretty much everywhere that you could fit insulation um, in it and it appears to be to a good and, and currently um, approved standard. So I think that for the village hall, certainly the, the answer is everything possible has been done. 
Um, Hamish, I'm told by Lynn on the um, on the Rec Committee that they have recently put uh, insulation, additional insulation around the coolers, um, and that was done last summer. But they haven't yet seen the full benefit of that because obviously the Rec's not you know, like anywhere, everywhere else is not in a a normal um, billing cycle. But uh, they are expecting that that will have done made quite a difference to the coolers. I have taken into account a improvement from that in the latest set of figures we've got. So effectively, I've pre tried to pre-estimate what the improvement ought to be, <coughs> both um, from that and from other adjustments and how it's used. I went back to the um, company that had provided one of the, the two estimates that had been received, and they finally got their revised figures through to me just before Christmas. Um, as expected, uh, they increased substantially the size of both the, um, the PV VAT panels um, that they were recommending, and also now recommend the larger size battery, which was a size I originally confused with the, the one that was being fitted to the, what well, they were recommending for the school, um, which is the 13 and a half kilowatt one. I've cranked through the figures. I hopefully you've all had a chance to look at the, the document that I sent to both the committees um, on it. There are some fairly heroic assumptions in there, but I think they're all based on reasonably sound um, you know, judgment in terms of what the likelihood is um, in terms of usage. I mean, bluntly, without you know, a level of detail um, in terms of billing and the amount of power used each hour of a day, I, it's hard to see what we could do that's any more detailed. I've made some est estimates on that and uh, done a lot of digging. So I think the figures we've got are reasonably dependable. And my estimate is that they're probably accurate to, you know, to no worse than 10% um, in terms of the, the, the benefits and the costs. I think you know, from all of that, the payback period is quite long. Um, but on the other hand, uh, the, you know, the benefits are significant and um, the, uh, I think, you know, my, I believe that the um, project is worthy of submitting up to um, the council to see if they want to provide, um, you know, to provide it. The, oh, the final thing, um, Kev, you asked if the, if the figures include an allowance for deterioration of the, of the uh, solar panels. Uh, we are assured in writing from the um, company that they are. Okay. So um, I don't know if anyone's got any particular questions they want to ask about uh, the village hall one initially, and then... Uh, yeah. So both, sorry, both um, of those quotes, they're quoting a six-year payback. Is that right? They quote, yes. That doesn't include, as I say in my, um, I said in a longer note, that does not include the battery. Um, I've done a completely separate um, assessment uh, on them, and I think I hit a fi figure of uh, just over 10 years um, on it, that, and that's including the battery. And for the village hall, it's also including the extra money that's been put aside because of the cost of drilling holes in the asbestos roof. And if we get some grant support with that, um, I guess what, what's the, what's the, in reality, the real um, payback that's going to be. Uh... That, that is taking into account the support, both the um, support that we had discussed um, um, previously and yeah. the money that we're seeking from the, from the council. Okay. That's looking at the total cost of each project. Okay. Um, I've got one other thing um, I would like to say about it, Tim. Um, obviously, there's a lifespan on these. And obviously, you need to be aware that after like 25 years, somebody's going to have to pay to take this down. So obviously, your costs need to show or have a reserve fund put aside for having it removed after a considerable amount of years as well. Well, the... Uh, well, like that. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Um, yeah, I mean, equally well, I think the current life, uh, estimated life on them is, is over 20 years on these, is yeah. it not? Yeah. I, I, I would say 20 to 25 years, but, you know, 
after 25 years of being on that roof, they're going to need taken down, yeah, and which is going to be a cost as well. But um, other than that, I'm quite happy with the figures, and you know, if everybody else is in favour of it, I would like to propose it as well. Also, uh, if I might, <coughs> the inverters are only guaranteed for 10 years. Yeah. So, so 10 years time, I mean, I had to uh, replace my inverter. <coughs> yeah, the other, but the other thing, Dennis, on all of this is that uh, you know, the, the technology is improving, the costs are reducing. Um, I think any installation of this you know, sort is going, to, is going to require some degree of uh, support. The fact that the payback period, is, is, you know, the lines cross at that point, doesn't mean that all the money after that is free. Um, yeah. You are, you're correct. It's also likely that as as these tech, as the technology improves, um, after say ten years time, there may well be actually, a, you know, we may be in a different world in terms of solar technology, and actually they they look to actually replace it and buy back some of that equipment. So the whole issue with things get reaching that ten year milestone, it's likely that after ten years there'll be new schemes around, there'll be new technology actually that it makes more sense to replace it with. But uh, I guess yeah, that's in years. I'll, I'll be long off the committee by then, I imagine. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> uh, well, we can only do the best we can at the moment we're dealing with yep, it. Absolutely. And that's all we can do. And at the moment, the figures look pretty promising. Okay. Um, Is everybody else in agreement with Tim and Kevin? Yeah. I am. Because yeah. the, the payback time for the actual recreation trust. If they put 2,000 in, the payback time should be reasonably short, shouldn't it? That, that's including the, the payback time is including the money that the, the, the rec are putting into it. Um, so it's looking at the total cost of the project. Um, yeah. The, money, the payback is, is if like, not doesn't care about uh, who's putting what money in. It just says this is what the project costs and this is what the benefit is. Yeah, yes, I understand that. But looking at it from the trust's treasurer's point of view, their actual payback time will be quite short, won't it? Well, it will, because effectively they're getting free money. Yeah. And, it, and if we don't get it, somebody else will. Paul, you, Paul, can I confirm that you're in agreement as well? He's muted. <laughs> Muted and no video. Screen. No idea if he's even there. No. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm going to assume things. it's unanimous. We'll check with Paul when he comes yeah. back that it is unanimous, but I'm going to assume at this point that it is. Yeah. The only other thing, Tim, is on the one of the quotes, it's actually addressed to the village school, which is the Tesla battery. I don't know if you've spotted that. Yeah, the Tesla... No, the separate quote does, uh, does state that the... Um, they're now recommending the same battery, the Tesla um, model. Yeah, but it's actually broader. addressed for the, for the school. I may, have, I may have sent the wrong one again, but it's... Yeah, I you've, have, sent I have, all, yeah you've, you've sent one email for the village hall, one for the rec, and the one that says Tesla battery yeah. is actually addressed the village school. Right, I do have separate yes. ones for a separate yeah. one now for the rec um, that was sent in December. I think that's which is the same price for the one. Yeah. I can provide that if necessary. That's fine. It, yeah, it probably is the same price. It's just a small technicality. I've yeah. seen that was all that it's actually addressed for the wrong site. Yeah, that's because the first time round that was the only what the the school was the only one they were actually um, sending the the figures to. But I'll 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 correct that. Yeah, brilliant, mate. Okay. Um, yeah, the other thing was, are, is the parish council going to contribute any money? I thought that was part of the condition of us um, looking at it. We, you were asking for an initial five hundred pound, I believe. I was going to ask if everybody, if, that's, if that agreement uh, covers that as well. I thought it did because it's that's good in to the get clarification. You Thank you both. Are you all happy that a it gets submitted and b that the parish council, should they be successful in their bid, will be donating or uh, granting, I should say not donating, granting 500 pounds towards the project. 
Yes. Is that towards towards each project, is it? Yes. Well, we're, we're yes, talking about the village hall for yeah. a minute and we'll move on to the wreck in a moment. Right, OK, sorry. Yeah. Again, I will assume that's unanimous until Paul comes back and says anything else. Hamish has got his finger up. Hamish, have you got some? Up? No, no, I was <laughs> working. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. A hand for question and a finger for voting. We need to know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's the village hall, and the recreation is more or less the same, I believe, isn't it, Tim? It's pretty much the same. There is a difference in total cost of a thousand um, yeah. on the input. There's a difference in terms of the the benefits because of the difference in the uh, power consumption, um, and mostly because the 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 REC is already making some benefit or some use of the off-peak uh, figures. On the other hand, they chew up energy um, more consistently because of the coolers requirement. Um, so the figures, it, you know, it's a little bit, what's, uh, one on the swings is lost in the roundabouts for it. The figures come out very close. Okay, brilliant. Um, I'm also, you know, we'll um, propose this and go with the 500 pound if everyone's happy on that one as well. Just one thing, I think the Recreation Trust has decided that they will fund the Parish Council. So they're already putting 2,000 in, and if the Parish Council puts 500 in, they'll put two and a half in. That would change slightly the figures that we're applying for, but um, I'm, you know, I'm happy you know, that if, if approval is, uh, if in principle, is given, then I can work those figures with uh, the um, as the, the final application goes in. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy to propose the 500 on each one. So, and we've got, we've got, a, we've got a seconder for the rec application. I got another. I got another problem. Is, okay. is is this all going through the parish council so that the VAT can be claimed back? So is the trust or the village hall going to pay the parish council, and the parish council then going to settle the bill? The monies yes. will be sat in the parish council account. The money has to come to the parish council. Yes, but there is also the issue that that's a, I think a separate issue to the one on VAT. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to PM them you know, from a parish council perspective, uh, recognising that our liability is no greater than the, the 500. Surely if we claim the VAT back, we should add that on top of the 500 we've agreed to support them with. Well, the figures, the figures that are quoted in the uh, are VAT X. Don't forget, it. so it's only 5% VAT as well on this, I believe, isn't it? Correct. The 5% on 10,000 is still, yeah. Better than 20%. Oh, yes. But if the, uh, if the figures are exclusive of VAT, then we need to ascertain whether we're going to claim the VAT back or not, because if not, we're going to be looking to add 5% onto those costs. It would be stupid if we don't uh, um, claim it back. So, as the parish councillor are putting 500 each, if it goes ahead, or is, is that 500 including or excluding VAT? Excluding. Okay. And we're not expecting to be paying VAT on, you know, if we, if we um, do take the, the payments for it, or make the payments for it, then we are we're, we're paying, it back. Um, paying VAT generally, which seems to me to be a win-win. You know, the only thing we need to make sure is that the two committees have given me a verbal agreement and we need to just go back I suggest and say that they need to accept that any cost overruns will be met by them. I suggest it probably needs to be a written agreement rather than Absolutely. something verbal. Agreed. We will also we need to ensure that the invoices are made out to the parish council otherwise we won't be able to claim back the VAT. Yep. In that case am I assuming therefore that everybody is in favour of the recreation one as well? with both elements, A, supporting the application, and B, the 500. Yeah. Paul, we, we assumed in your absence that you would support the Village Hall application as well. Is that correct? Oh, yes, definitely. Thank you. Uh, 
and see the school what I've labeled the school application which is for the um the garden the forest school and the allotment right how do you are you going to recover that because I'm not my time to read that got chewed up this evening with uh, my, my mother-in-law <laughs> To be fair, my time to read a 16 page document got fairly chewed anyway. Um, you will have all seen the document. I sent it through to you all anyway. Um, hopefully you have, have had time to read it or at least glance through it. Um, we're gonna want, but I, I haven't actually opened that email, which is remiss of me. Bear with me two seconds whilst I get the, um, that's not going to help whilst I get the document which has got the bottom line figures basically in it. Um, talk amongst yourselves for a moment. Has anyone actually read through any of this? Read through the application? Yeah. Um, I've not read through the specific application, but obviously I was aware of what's being proposed, having spoken with um, Laura and Juliet as, as far as the application was concerned and what they were applying for. Okay. Um, I've read through it, and to me, it read like a business plan, <laughs> like she was setting up her own business on it. Um, it was very, um, how can I put it? It was one minute she was volunteering for the school, the next minute it's for the allotment, and the next minute it's like a business plan for herself. I don't know if you can shed any light on that, Adam. Or No, not as far as the, um, the forest school is concerned. Um, I know that Lara, obviously, is she does some volunteering at the school and she's taken on the responsibility of the school allotment in terms of being yeah. able to run uh, and I think really the view is that the um, she's signed the agreement on behalf of using it for the benefit of the children in the school um, we've I've had discussions with her about making sure that um, events and organizing any activities that are gone on there ideally go under the branch under the umbrella of the school from an insurance perspective to make sure that they're covered from a liability point of view okay. um so i think really the 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 plan for the allotment the forest school etc is really going to be essentially a, a collaboration with the school directly but ultimately benefiting the children um there's no view that um uh, from what I've certainly in the discussions I've had with her about it, that it's going to be used for any necessarily personal gain or anything like that. Okay, so it's basically is a volunteering thing for the school, is it more than? Yeah, so so essentially the school obviously don't run any schemes like that at the moment. So the view was that they're going to be using the allotment to teach about growing, but also to use that plot and hopefully the forest school they've got there to then run activities for the children both within the as part of the curriculum but then also out of school as after school activities as well okay yeah because like you said if you read through it, it it to me it reads reads like a business plan and it's like a health and safe safety statement then a risk assessment and it, it generally goes through you know quite in depth of I th really I th like a business i think to be honest it's probably more the point of, of being of mitigating risk really um actually you know the fact that you're running activities for young children on there yeah. um i think the view probably being is actually being over keen in terms of actually making sure all bases are covered obviously any grants that go through get, do get get questioned and and they get get checked over so i think the view probably was that she was submitting the information just so if we did question that it's already been covered off um, okay, so. but um i yeah, yeah from from the discussions i've had with both lara and juliet um on their plans for using the allotments because yeah, obviously i'm involved quite closely with the allotment stuff um the yeah. view is very much it's going to be to benefit the children of the school uh, on a voluntary okay. basis okay yeah, I, haven't, I haven't checked the the um you know, all the totals she's quoting the um but the vast up, majority yeah. of the costs are you know all things which go directly to support the activities in the school the yeah. only area where there is any you know, thing slightly different is the fact that they've got uh, tr um training in for um 
somebody to actually run the forest school system and that's not necessarily um, it doesn't indicate who would actually get that training um, that's the only thing in there that isn't a, a I can call it a tangible benefit uh, from the from the input but we could put a covenant on that in terms of actually making sure that um, whoever well, whoever that goes to fund obviously is associated in some way shape or form with the school and that's directly to benefit the activities associated with the school rather than personal gain because there is a point at one bit in here about um, charging for certain children outside of school activities. So where would that go to? Yeah, that bit I don't know. <laughs> I Yeah, I can't give any information on that one. Unless it's to cover the running costs, because obviously, um, depending on what activities they're running for materials, yeah. etc., there may be running costs that are incurred um, for running those activities. I mean, it all looks pretty good if it's for the benefit of the kids in the community. I think the deadline is, um, I think it's end of this week, isn't it? Um, if I'm not right, is that right, Emma? 12th, I think. 12th, yeah. So I guess we could always agree in, <clears throat> we can always agree in principle um, and have a follow up offline conversation just to clarify any points to make sure that. Uh, we're happy with the intentions but like I said from my discussions with Lara and Juliet who are running you know this as far as a climate emergency perspective is concerned um, it's very much in the intention to benefit the school and the children. I, I would suggest that you ensure that you know what items you want to clarify and what answers you'll be happy with. That's that's an, uh, that's, that's an open suggestion for the um, uh, for the for the parish council if we don't if we're happy with what's been presented that's not necessary it's if we're if we have any questions that are preventing us from agreeing i suggest that we just itemize those and, and get that clarified in the next 24 48 hours yeah kevin my suggestion was that i think adam's point on the clarifying the the training and potentially covering you know, ensuring that that has got a long-term benefit to the school commensurate with the cost uh, is one item. I think the other one you, know, you raise is another one to do. You know, those to me seem to be the top two main questions on it. Um, my... yeah, I might be reading too much into it. You know, perhaps it's just the the ex businessman's head on me. Um, I don't know, but it's. <laughs> I think it is written by somebody who is more into the softer aspects of. Um, these activities than the business act aspects of them yeah, I, yeah. I, like i said I, I think my suspicions are they've heard on the side of caution and and looked at you know, everything around the periphery in terms of paperwork to make sure that it went through so i, th I think that's you know, we should be honoring those intentions really yeah. um and i think am i right i might add that there's not a request for um any school fund sorry any parish council funding on this one no there's not Tim there's no, no request for parish council at all um it's just I just found it hard to work out if she was volunteering working for the school working for herself um reading through it all um one, if you'd all read it you would have you would probably have the same yeah. concerns as me the one thing that I did notice is that one of the answers to the questions um, given was that, um, bear with me, I'll get the exact wording, um, is has there any other source of funding been identified? And the answer has been given as yes, but no details. Where is that from? Um, oh, yes, I see. Page two. Uh, two yes, two questions below the actual figure of the eleven thousand ninety-four pounds and thirty-one pence. Has any other funding and/or match funding been identified to support the delivery of the project? And the answer, as I say, is, has been given as yes, but no details. So we need to understand whether the school is looking to support that, or whether they're expecting the council to um, Paris Council to back that. I know that in the past, Juliet has said that they wouldn't be asking. The Parish Council for any money for this project. Yeah. 
but it, whether it's it's as you say that yes the school's going to or yes it's been identified but there isn't any money or it, it's just because there's no detail attached to the word yes that it's a little bit unclear They certainly know how to spend money. Say that again, Amish. Sorry, mate. They certainly know how to spend money. <laughs> School cost money. Yeah. Well, I've, I've said my bit on it. So um, I don't know if anyone else has any other things to bring up on it or not. I think from, from my perspective, um, I think you know, anything along these lines that will benefit the, the children and the village, it, it's, it can't be a bad thing, right? You know, I think it's been even looking at the allotments it's been really fantastic seeing them develop over the last 12 months um and actually seeing people now taking them up and i think if we can start to use that to benefit the school given that they're right opposite um and even if they can get some activities that help them from a, a mental health perspective from a getting their, their fingers green i think uh, it's a it's a good thing yeah i think it ticks a lot i think it ticks a lot of boxes i think that we just need to as you know, as, I, as Kevin and Adam have suggested, clarify those few remaining points. You know, it seems to me to meet the, you know, the what, uh, many of the wider aims that the Climate Emergency Community Fund is aiming at, yeah. um, because it's rather wider spread than the, the other two. Um, I think it's you know, not surprising that there's a few more questions on it. Um, but I think those ones, to my mind, would would you know, allow us to say yes absolutely there's nothing would stop us i think the yes needs to be backed by demonstrating that the school is actually you know is the, the source of that yes and that the other points are made and i would suggest then that you know if that's the case that you know we should support it recognizing that we're supporting it verbally well you know in in um, nature but not in money yeah anything that gets the kids interested in gardening is a good thing yeah. Yeah. But, um, obviously, as parish council, we have to scrutinise these things and look at it of all different angles. Agreed. Equally well, I would suggest if there's any if there's anything that you know, raises issues, you know, as it goes up through the uh, scrutiny chain, either they will come back and ask questions, or they will reject it because they don't like it. You know, it's only going to be really those two options, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we can do what we what we can. We can't necessarily you know, second guess every question on it. No. My next question is: Who is going to be seeking that clarification? Adam. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Take it as an action. That's fine. Well, Thank I'm going, you. I'm going to be fairly busy. I, can I just clarify one other one? Effectively, for all of these, because. Um, Lara has clarified separately that the applications need to go in online. So what I'm expecting to be doing, um, you know, if, Emma, as long as you're happy with this, is sitting doing some cutting and a fair bit of cutting and pasting over the next uh, two days. I am more than happy, Tim, because I was about that was going to be my next question. Is that I just do not have the capacity at the moment to do that. No, I, I, I uh, scheduled time in to do that. I, I just don't have the capacity at the moment, I'm afraid. So no, I'm more than happy fit for you to do that, Tim. Yeah, and if you absolutely. want to use the um, Chilthorne Dama Parish Council email address, by all means, if they send something through to me, then I'll, I'll forward it straight on. Yeah, I do have one question, Emma. You wanted a physical um, address for the Parish Council. Um, yeah. My address. Could you email that to me? It's on, the top, it's on the top of every agenda that I send. In that case, I apologise for not reading every single word. <laughs> I tend to start at action uh, and write one. I not like you, Tim. That. But it is at the top of every agenda. And it might even be on the minutes, but I'm not 100% certain on that. Uh, but it is always on the agenda. Thank you very much. I think it might also be on the website. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have no doubt, Emma. 
Okay. Are we happy with we've, we've covered everything on that subject? Yeah. Okay. And we move on to item 12, uh, which is the website. Have, we're going to have a proper proposal oh. and a vote on this. Anyone would like to propose it, Adam? I'll propose. Seconder? What, what are you actually votes. proposing? What are you actually proposing? I'm proposing to support um, item 10A and 10B with a £500 support um, and 10C will support with no financial backing um, and we will clarify the three points that have been aforementioned um, before we submit the application on behalf of the uh, uh, parishioners. Second that. Okay. All in favour? With a finger from Hamish. Paul? <laughs> yes, yeah, by all means. Okay, we're all happy to move on to item 12 now, the website. Over to Hamish. Uh, I, asked, I asked this to go on because yep. um, it's not very good, really. And if we don't have the time or uh, or in my case, <laughs> the ability to make it better, should we use some of our reserves to pay somebody to give us a decent website? You've lost me a little bit there, Hamish. Well, our website, the village website that we are supposed to be backing, is not very good. If you look at other villages, some of them are quite good. And if nobody on the parish council or the clerk have time or ability to do it, do we need to give consideration to paying somebody to make a website, decent website for us? Hamish, can I ask when the last time you looked at the website was, just so that we know where you're where you are as a baseline? Sorry, today. Uh, Hamish, can I can I ask a question? Um, the one of the issues in terms of taking a website forward and, and you know is what the statement of requirement would be in certainly if we were to even think of getting somebody in we would have to understand that um before we identified costs or workload or whatever on it do you have examples you'd like to um to share of what, what you think uh, good stroke better ones are that we could you know and what makes them good and better that we could look at whether the uh, whether you know that's feasible for us to uh, take forward? I know you did put one at me before Christmas and I'm sorry I didn't write it down and I've been running around on mostly those applications. Well um, actually I, I did quote to you Barton St David which is um, and I looked it up today and I don't know what I did wrong but it didn't look nearly as good as it was when I looked it up a month ago. I didn't get, it wasn't nearly as good. I didn't seem to get into the right bits, whereas last time I seemed to have, I thought it was quite good. That was Barton St. David's, which is about the same population and has about half the precept of us. Hamish, can I follow up Tim's question and say, do you know what it is that's missing from our website? Not really, not really no. I was just going on, on, on an impression. If I was somebody who, Punched in Chilton Domer, and that's what I got. Yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, we don't have a, a not that I want my photograph up, but we don't have proper connections that I can't, I haven't been able to per se, persuade the Recreation Trust to put anything on there. You know, it just seems a bit. I will highlight, Hamish, that um, three meetings ago, I asked all parishioners to send me updated photographs for the website to go on there. And they haven't been they haven't been submitted at all. I've had shingles since I didn't send it because of my eyelid. For for whatever reason. But I, I think Hamish, um not that I'm precious about the website, but what I would say is that websites don't they need updating quite often. And if you ask an external company to do it, all they'll ask you is what do you want to go on there? So our issue is not necessarily with who looks after it, or who designs it, it's with the information that's provided and making sure that it's up to date. Um, so I think if we are going to go and have a look at somebody else to take this on, if that's the wish of the council, 
Um, we need to have a very um, honest look at, at where we're going to get the information from and who's going to be updating it uh, uh, because it, it does need to be a moving beast. Kevin, can I sort of um, put a penny worth in that one as well? Well, I, I thought it was quite good, actually, <laughs> I've got to admit, compared with the... Cheers, hey, Mitch. It's shove a nail in my cor for coffin word, don't you? Uh, I think... I think yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd suggest, I mean, this, the secret of getting it good, as Adam suggested, is actually getting more people and more of the bodies in the village to actually use it. You know, and yeah. we're in a horrendous period at the moment where half the people are running to stand still financially and in every other way, and the other half are trying to keep themselves sane. Um, I think the... I come back, I think we ought to have a vision of what we're trying to achieve with the website. Um, you know, and that covers both the formal activities that we've got to, to do, you know, as we discussed a couple of meetings ago, you know, that comes from, you know, from the, our... Um, Transparency you know, code. Yeah, the, the, yeah the, ob the obligations on that. There's also a bunch of other, of other bits that go with it, which we haven't fully addressed. Um, um, the, and the Zen what actually we would like to get people to do with it to grow it and that comes back to it you know if we can get people to put some information in then there's a question of how is that done is it you know adam yeah. stroke myself with a lot of support uh, editing, editing it is it um you know that we go out and get and get somebody in but you know, the point adam's made is absolutely right content is key on these things and an external provider can suggest content but is unlikely to well we'll charge through the nose to provide it what, what i would say is as well hamish is that we actually the the reason this has been designed this way actually we have relatively static content on the main website because that's our legal entity in terms of making sure we're transparent with our data the reason for the forum being there is that is for actually being having more information be updated more often now we're actually just starting to see people contribute to that um it it gets publicized only really through you know what's on and and i think the green steps newsletter referred to it now as well actually but any new website does take time to to come online and to actually get people using it and understanding it's there i know many of the parishioners when we're, they're told there's a website they don't really know about it and they're quite surprised to know that we have it there um that's not really down to the design it's just the fact that they just don't know it's there but um we are seeing a few people you know communicating on the forum now and, and getting on there for more information and, and that's uh, really that's leaving it to the village to to have that content there not to the not to us and, and i think the other thing hamish sorry on on the green steps you know, we're trying to push getting people to use the forum to, to you know to communicate on that and there's quite a, a strand going in that trying to get greater involvement if we could do it in some of the other areas you know the village hall and the wreck are in you know, are on shutdown at the moment until we can get ourselves back into it. But I think you know, once once we come out of this, hopefully in the next six months, you know, I would hope that we would start seeing rather more activity from both of those um, on it. Yeah. One thing I do like is when you do go on the website is you've got a picture of a lovely rolling fields and scenery behind and then page two goes into COVID. <laughs> Doesn't really give it much good for the website or for the village. I know no, it's a bit that of a was... topic at the moment, but I think that was actually really down to see page two. That was off the back of decisions that were made back in March, actually. So we can we can quite happily remove that if we don't if we deem that is not necessary. I think the world knows we have COVID, coronavirus to deal with nowadays, so we can potentially let that have a bit more of a back. Maybe, a back maybe step. move it just down down the list a little bit more. Just leave it there, but move it down the list. Yeah, but yeah, I I agree. It's uh, you know. I, I think we've we've been around this a lot a lot more, but I think Hamish, you know, a point well made. But I, what I would suggest is is that we probably review um, how we're going to source content and how we're going to do better with what we have currently. And if we deem that the current system is not able to surface that information, then we need to have another conversation anyway. I, mean, I think I'm all right in thinking, Adam, that you are currently pretty snowed under with everything else that you're dealing with. Um, 
Well, as far as the website is concerned, it really only gets updated at the moment. The the main bit is when what's on gets changed and uh, when the, the the new parish council meeting information is updated because we're trying to encourage a lot of the parishioners to use the forum rather than the main website. Sorry. Obviously, if anyone wants any more content put on there, generally it only takes a day or so for me to put it on there uh, in amongst everything else I've got. So, But I'm not getting a, a flurry of people asking me to put new content on there. So. What, what I'm suggesting is that perhaps you know, once I can, once we've got the um, the fund applications in and you know, any, um, in the next couple of months, I might have enough time to be able to look at you know, some of the options for developing it. And you know, Hamish, you know, and anybody else, you know, they've got ideas for how they want to or, or suggestions of good you know, of you know, good um, uh, approaches that have been used elsewhere. You know, I'd, I'd be happy to coordinate some of that and. You know, and as I said, you know, suggested earlier, come up with what a, ro a, ro a roadmap might look like for, de for developing it and what, would, you know, what we might be going out to people in a village to say, boy, could you actually you know, take uh, ownership of a page on this or more? Well, the other thing I was doing was looking on the website as well. And I see you put on about the internet, Wi-Fi, whatever you want to call it, Adam. And there's only been one response on it. On the forum, yeah, yeah, that's that's right. I put that on there, um, but that was more just as a general feeler. But like I said, we yeah. we get it, we're getting very very small numbers of people looking at that at the moment because I, in reality, I think the, they all have more things to be doing with their lives at the moment anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm not I'm not overly surprised that in general that the website hits aren't aren't getting that much. We've had we did have a good flurry of people when the Green Steps survey was done. Um, and obviously we utilized the website for that and, and that was done, you know, done really well. So yeah. that was nice. Um, and off the back of that, we now have uh, a lot of new contacts within the backend database. So actually when we want to email out and communicate out with our parishes, we can now communicate them directly, which is really good. Um, and that's something we weren't able to really do easily before. So, um, okay. you know. And, and the, the other thing is, is, well, everyone's here is, Emma and Adam probably is tips and training or anything. Is, are we all? Would, is there any more training you would like, Emma? Or you know, I don't know how. I'm a, I'm aware that the um, transparency code stuff hasn't yet been done. Um, there are folders or something that are that are required to put previous minutes and the like in. Um, but I'm also aware that Adam's been yeah he's pretty he's busy. busy as well. So, uh, as as have I. To be fair, um, I was going to say the offer there was of the offer was there for training to do that. If you're not have, not aware of how to update update that information, so um, that offer is still I'm there. I'm obviously if you aware want of it, how and... to upload documents because I've been doing that. Um, but it's the kind of archive side of it that quite how it's been designed, etc., to put archive documents in and where to put them. Um, that's the bit that needs attention. As far as the transparency code is, is concerned, and I'm also aware that you know, from other conversations I've had with other clerks, etc., that they've been he hearing on the grapevine that government is looking. Obviously, COVID's kind of stopped that potentially um, at parish council websites that might not be transparency code compliant, and we obviously so, hit with that. So uh, I'd like as to this is sort that as soon as possible. But as I'm going to be broader. mega busy for a while. As this has been brought up formally, I'd like to just have it minuted that I'm happy to offer training for anyone who needs to have that to make sure that we're compliant. Um, and, and you know, if if it needs to be, uh, if we need to up the, upload the information, if that can be provided to either me or anyone else who wants to be trained to do it, I'm happy to do that bulk upload to make sure that that's we, we, we remain compliant because that was something we discussed months ago now and yeah. the, the offer of training was there um if i need to give any training i'm always happy to do that because we need to make sure this is yeah. um a service that ticks the boxes well i mean i think uh, adam i mean given, given quite how what emma's got on at the moment as well you know um i'm happy to take a bit of training if required so i can help upload some of that stuff and get us you know, get us back to being uh, where we should be on it so i'm happy so, to emma asked I'll take an action. If I, if are you familiar with WeTransfer? 
Um, yeah, I don't use it particularly often, but I know of it. Yep. That's fine. Yes. So I'll send you some step by steps on how to send me the bulk information in a one folder. Are, are we able to take it from the previous website? Because it was all there. Yeah, so I the pre I can take it from there, but I just need to know what needs to go. Um, a lot of that information was brought across um, from the from the previous archives, so we probably need to understand what hasn't been brought across because I probably need to understand that. where to find it then. Okay, yeah. uh, I, uh, perhaps the three of us can work together on that and you know, and just you know, make it as you know, so we've got everything across. I think you know, Adam, I'm happy to work with you there and. Uh, you know, take some of the, the punching out. Brilliant. Thank That's you very fine. much for everyone. Okay. Is that it for the website? Yep. <laughs> okay. Thanks well, for triggering that, Hamish. <laughs> You're off my Christmas card list, Hamish. <laughs> Sorry, it's got I, almost I, a year I to get back on. What the of Britain pilots felt like when they got shot down in flames. Thank you. Oh no, no, no! You've been you you've provided us an opportunity. Okay, so we move on to item thirteen, the allotments. There was nothing specific, but I decided that it may need to be a, a recurring item on the agenda. Okay. No, that's fine. So I think in the meeting we had last time, we were going to wait for the climate change application to go through to cover the allotments off. Um, that obviously hasn't been done, you know, for mentions of a reason, uh, reasons mentioned before. Um, I've since been out and cleared, recleared the, the allotment space and my plant. We've had uh, three people come forward to say that would be interested in having um, use of the, of the shared allotment area. Um, so my plan is to uh, go out and start marking out um, breaking ground, as you say, Mr. Chairman, okay. um, and uh, get that uh, get that ball rolling. Any ideas how many plots you might get there, Adam? So we've had three confirmed so far. Um, I think in the design I put forward, uh, it was eight plots. I think, if I remember rightly, um, so that I presented the design a, uh, a couple of meetings ago. Um, so up to eight plots we can have there. So I think. Uh, if we can get those three taken on, um, then it certainly makes the £25 annual charge worthwhile. Um, and then hopefully that will then drive some interest moving forwards um, as the as the weather starts to warm up. Brilliant. Glad to hear it. I may need a chisel to break ground mine, given the temperatures <laughs> we've got at the moment, but we'll see yeah. how it goes. Okay. Thank you very much. Are we okay to move on to item 14, Emma? Village Hall? Right. I have... Yes, thanks. Yeah, nothing to report on the village hall other than what we've been discussing. We have a village hall uh, quarter three meeting next Monday. Uh, so I will uh, report back to the next meeting after the, after we've held it. So, yeah, to, yeah, on, you, you I'll, deal with this one. I'll say with permission of the chairman, um, yeah. there was a there was an inquiry um, about using the village hall. Um, and I think... Um, uh, let me get the details up specifically of what was uh, what was the one from Trudy Steer that you. That's it. That's that is correct. Yeah. So I think I think it's more obviously we it's lovely we're getting inquiries to the website requesting these things. In fact, all those three inquiries we discussed in this meeting have come through the website which, as well, which has been great. Um, I think the view was they wanted to use it. Uh, a local sports company called Premier Sport wanted to use it. Uh, they teach in the primary schools in around Devon and Somerset um the details are in the email um what they wanted to do is is get a quote for using uh the hall for a week um and i think really the the question i put across to the parish council really was can we get a formal standpoint on the village hall from the village hall committee in terms well, of you that, know i'm very happy just to push that to the to, to the village hall committee and the bookings officer in particular which is you know what the normal route for dealing with that would be given it's yeah. half term week and the school won't be using it i would have thought there is a reasonable probability of that yeah and i think it was more out is there a statement from a covid perspective are we allowing bookings to go ahead in there given that obviously there's cleaning etc that needs to take place to make it safe the village um, has, a, has a set of processes risk assessments blah because i helped write the damn things um the and um you know, put it this way if we are permitted to open um legally we can open safely there are um after every use the village there is uh cleaning carried out there is additional cleaning processes in place if there are any problems so yeah you know, bluntly i think 
you know, we're as well set up for that as we possibly can be, you know, subject to all the other pieces. So I think that, you know, um, in many respects, what they're proposing is very similar to what the usage daily is, courtesy of the, the, the school file that was, you know, is functioning. Um, I don't have the latest from you know, because of the obviously changes to everything that happened at the beginning of this week. But yeah. by next, by the committee meeting, we'll be in a position to go back on that. So, yeah, I think just, you know, far, I'll, I'm happy to take the action on that one. If uh, So I've got, yeah, I've got all the contact details on the website. I've not obviously sent it, distributed out as part of this email chain is concerned, but I can forward that on to you to send to the bookings clerk and then they can then, uh, oh, sorry, officer, not clerk. Um, so they can then um, respond accordingly for that. And but could, um, you, could you fire me? So, um, if that's on, if it's on the website, I'll pick up her return uh, details because I'll simply go back and say I've put, I forwarded it on to the, that we forwarded it on to the virtual committee and to the bookings officer. Just yeah, a that's, quick sorry um just no, a quick no, no, question tim compared with what you just said about the school using it are we as the village hall turning away hires because the school's having it or are the school paying for it uh, my belief is the school is paying for it but we are having to turn away hires primarily because the turnaround time for cleaning means that we can't simply do the normal booking slots that were there before it's now got to be longer slots um, and fewer of them, and that's not attractive to all the people. The prioritisation had been given was number one, the school, number two, those agencies who are providing health support to the village community. So people like the British Oxygen um, team go in there. So um, a couple of mental health ones are being looked at as well. And then number three is, if you like, those areas which would are you know, the normal bookings, but you know, most of those are going to be off the back again. Um, you know, they came on when we came out of the last lot, the first uh, lockdown. Um, some of those were in place, some of them weren't. They're going, most of those are going to be off again because of the um, rules on numbers of people. So, so is the school actually using it as an extension of the classrooms? Effectively, yes. For a favourable rate or for a... Uh... I believe it's for a favourable rate, but uh, I'll, I'll double check and come back to you. Mm. I mean, the school it's, my got... all, it's my night to ask awkward questions tonight, isn't it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, no, it's just, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, I know it's for the community, but obviously it's still got to make money and we can't give it away. No. It's uh, yeah, at the moment, yeah, but at the moment equally well, the school is one of the, you know, the parts of the community that needs you know, facilities. So, yeah. That's taken in. You know, all of those are taken into account on the committee systems. I'll come back with, a, with uh, Kevin at next meeting with the details on that because I really, you know, you've just exhausted yeah. my current information. I know what it was about a month ago, two months ago now. Yeah. No, you know, just you know, because obviously somebody there wants to hire it for a week um, and probably pay good money. I know, I know the school is probably getting it for a favourable rate, but is it covering the wear and tear and everything on it? Uh, <laughs> the answer A is I don't know, and B, yeah, yeah, well, I've never okay. seen a, I've, ne I've never seen an overheads calculation in my life that I believed. No, okay. Sorry, I'm asking all, loads of awkward questions tonight for everywhere. No, that's fine. I'll t I'll come back to you on that one. Okay, thanks, Tim. Nice one. Okay, if we've exhausted that one, we'll move on to item 15, Recreational Trust. Well, there's even less going on, I think, at the right in the village hall. It's just comatose. Okay. Um, obviously, are, are we still hiring out the recreational ground in Hamish if it's needed? The ground? The bit, the oh. have, I don't know about this latest lockdown, but there have been kids training there okay. no, no, no we're just thinking obviously because obviously if they can't use the village hall perhaps we could put them in touch with a recreational ground and use their facilities well they they, they might i don't know i don't, I don't know like to see money wasted they need. No, i don't like to see money wasted or money not coming into the village if we can utilize it I, I am I'm aware that there are users of the previous users of Village Hall who have approached the rec to 
to you to use it in uh, in lieu because of they couldn't. So yeah, that is being looked at by the two committees. Yeah. Okay. No, it's just if you can't if we can't accommodate them in one building, can we use the other one? Basically. Yeah. Uh, okay. that, you know, I, mean, the, 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 I mean, certainly, I know from a village hall perspective. I think from a rec perspective, yeah, the two the two chairmen do talk to each other quite considerably. Yep. No, that's brilliant. Okay. Well, we we'll move on to item sixteen. Then, any other matters raised by permission of the chairman? No. Okay. Item seventeen: date and time of meeting. For the next one, 14th of Feb, uh, no, 4th of Feb, sorry. Yeah. I'm getting everything confused tonight. Yeah. Everyone happy? Yeah. <laughs> Happy-ish anyway. Oh, there we go. I believe that probably concludes tonight's meeting.